Out of all of the nations that had faced the wrath of the Skaven race, none had felt such defeats and misery at the hands of these vermin as the dwarves of Karaz and Kor. Long before the fall of Nagash, during the War of Cripple Peak, the Skaven had already made numerous successful invasions against the dwarves and their kingdom. The unprecedented success stems entirely from their unearthing of the long-forgotten Underway, the network of underground highways that previously connected all of the dwarfs' holds of the World's Edge Mountains together. With these highways, the Skaven were able to gain the element of surprise and attack the dwarfs from below. In time, the dwarfs began to lose ground as they became caught between greenskin armies on the surface and Skaven armies from the tunnels below. The territories that were captured by the Skaven were soon converted into ramshackle settlements or fortified strongholds. With the Skaven armies now dug in, the dwarfs found it difficult to dislodge them. As a result, the dwarfs became helpless as nearly every single major stronghold had beneath its fortifications one or more Skaven settlement, with a variety of different clans vying for power. This ensured that the mines would never be safe from any form of attack, as these well-made tunnels proved valuable for any Skaven army wishing to attack the upper levels. After the unprecedented earthquakes and volcanic eruptions during the time of woe, after the Skaven digging machine misfired, they began their fresh assault on the now weakened Dwarven kingdoms, the misfire turning out to be quite the boon to the Skaven race. Although forced to relinquish many settlements and minor strongholds, no dwarf in their right mind would ever imagine losing the magnificent stronghold of Karak Eight Peaks, the second most powerful stronghold in all of Karaz Angkor, to the clutches of these verminous hordes. By the time the Skaven clans had sent an expedition to mine out access points into the strongholds, Scouts and raiding parties had encountered fierce resistance as the dwarfs began to mobilize their entire military for the upcoming assault. Soon, invasions that were sent underground found tunnels littered with death traps and highly armored dwarfen regiments. With typical dwarfen precision, the dwarfs employed the use of the Ironbreaker regiments to guard and patrol key narrow access points where the Skaven numbers were to prove ineffective. Those from the invasion force that managed to break in through the Ironbreakers were soon faced with a firing line of Dwarfen marksmen and artillery batteries as they entered the heavily fortified upper levels. A vast quantity of Skaven blood was spilled for every inch of ground they took from the Dwarfs, and for every level they controlled. Yet around each new bend could be found another well-protected stronghold. Unable to overcome such formidable defences, the Skaven clans sought the guidance of the Council of Thirteen to aid in their efforts. The planning took nearly ten generations before completion, but it guaranteed success and full control of the Dwarven Kingdom. The first step in the plan was to convince the local Orc tribes to stop fighting each other for long enough for them to assault the Dwarfs on the surface. The second step would involve slowly poisoning the Dwarfen sewer and wells with enormous fragments of unrefined warpstone. Though the toxins took time to build up, by the course of the following months, what remained of the Dwarf populace were growing weakened and sick, their stout bodies straining to fight against the corrupted waters that they had drunk. In this time of weakness, the next part of the plan was to involve unleashing hordes of giant rats from the cages of Clan Mulder to launch sudden surprise attacks against critical dwarf positions that would greatly disrupt their war effort. But it would be the weaponry of Clan Scryer that made the most decisive difference to the war. The powerful but portable warp fire thrower was capable of melting and punching through the Gromril reinforced gates of the hold and as a result had no problem blasting the dwarfen shield walls that formed in front of such barriers. 
The dwarfs began to give ground, but they were still determined to hold out and kill as many of the vermin as they possibly could. It was during the fighting that the warlock engineers of Clan Scribe began to first deploy their newest and most deadly creations. Known as the Poisoned Wind Globe, this orb of glass had the capability to unleash a deadly gas attack that proved highly lethal to all that breathed it. Neither armor nor stout determination could combat the fumes, of course, and soon many dwarves, both mighty warriors and unrivaled artisans alike, died agonizing deaths in the pitch blackness beneath the world. After well over a century and a half of bitter, constant warfare, the last few hundred surviving dwarfs were forced to flee the sacred city. With their exodus, the glorious kingdom of Kerak Eight Peaks had finally been taken by the vermin hordes. The fall of their largest and most prized kingdoms alerted the dwarves that the Skaven were unlike any threat that they had ever faced. The dwarfs knew their enemy well, while a green skin war or a chaos invasion had cataclysmic outcomes. They were just one event, and those that survived the ensuing slaughter always rebuilt and showed no respite, nor were they relenting. Since losing Karak Eight Peaks, there had been attacks under every major dwarf hold. Once deemed unassailable, even Karaza Karak, the everlasting capital stronghold of strongholds, had since been penetrated. Its lower levels are now sealed with powerful runes and under constant guard, for the dwarfs know what awaits them within the depths below. With each new invasion or bitterly contested counterattack, underground warfare had since continued to change and evolve. The dwarfs, steadily pushed back from their underground narrow hallways, began defending the grand halls and caverns. Here vast armies formed, daring the Skaven to amass their forces and assault them headlong. The Dwarfen shield walls stretched unbroken for miles. The Skaven took the bait, and only after suffering repeated massacres did the Ratmen leadership adopt newer tactics. Taking examples of the tunnel fighting around Karak Eight Peaks, the Skaven began amassing large amounts of siege engines and war machines to be used in the larger halls and caverns of the Dwarf Holds. This also led to the development of digger machines used to dig through the thick rock walls and unleash surprise attacks upon the upper levels. In time, the employment of Clan Scryer troops became more common as their weaponry proved highly decisive in breaking through powerful dwarfen positions. Just like water roaring through stone, the Kingdom of Dwarves began its mutual decline and erosion as the constant wars and invasions took their toll on their people. Karak Izil was plundered and its ruined halls left to the greenskin hordes. The mines of Grim Duraz in the Grey Mountain were taken by Clan Morbidus, while Mount Gunnabad and Mount Silverspear had fallen to both greenskin and skaven armies alike. Invaded by both above and below, the great everlasting realm of the dwarves began to buckle under the relentless assault. <laughs>